Our first stop is the little community of Appleton near Pulaski that was once home of the world's largest general store. In fact, they called it the Big Red General Store before it closed in the 50s. Rob Wiles went down there to discover how the old building has found new life with a growing treasure of community memories. They're shaking the walls and floors at the Big Red Store in the Appleton community south of Pulaski today, just like generations did here starting in about 1890 when the store opened. But this round of merrymaking is new because the Big Red Store closed in the mid-50s and fell into decay until Linda Boyd got tired of looking out her window at a dilapidated building. I live in the house next door and I would wash dishes and I'd look out the window and I'd say, somebody please do something to that building. It's falling on down, do something. Nobody did anything, so it came the opportunity for us to buy it. And so we did. Basically on the inside, we cleaned. There has been some flooring replaced and some of the columns in the back. But basically we've cleaned and left it as near the original look as it was. And that made it the perfect place for the people like Marvin Boyd, who remember how it was to come to what was the shopping mall of its day. This was the largest country store outside of Atlanta, Georgia. It was advertised as that and was the largest country store. You could buy anything you wanted here, just about. Bryna Melton saw things from the other side of the counter at the Big Red Store. I've come this working here when I was I worked on here when I was 20 years old. And uh, what was it like? Was it a busy place when you were working busy here? Busy place. If I had needle and thread, I'd have so. If you needed a needle and a thread and just about anything else, you could get it here. And Linda and the other owners are doing their best to restock the shelves so visitors can get a look at the way things were when the big red store could take care of you from cradle to grave. We've got one of the original caskets, the old wooden caskets. Your barrel expense would be $46.75. And the old hearst over here, they would be hauled in. It. Visitors love to come by. Some remember the store themselves. Others are seeking signs of ancestors to see what they bought here. Billy Elledge fits in both those categories. We were prowling through when Bob and Linda was putting some stuff in there. One of the first ones that I came to was my great grandpa, Neil Garner. Is that right? I believe it's three dollars and something, which is not much to us, but back then it was a whole lot. And they've got it. They've got a lot of things like that that people can come in here and they can look at their ancestors, things from their ancestors, and uh, it's just a place that very few remains. So as they were fixing the place up, they found all kinds of things left over from the old days of the store, like this. I mean, this is sort of the early 20th century version of Excel. okay? You kept all your business records right in here. Every time you'd have a transaction, you'd write down a receipt, like here's one. From 1937, this man came in, paid a nickel, and bought some dope. Now, back in 1937, dope was a Coca-Cola, and he probably got it at every kid's favorite part of this store, the soda fountain. As a general rule, all we came in here for was a double cola for a nickel. You know, a nickel in those days was just not as bad as five dollars today. I mean, you just didn't have those kind of that kind of money. When we came down here. Daddy would buy me a candy bar and a Coca Cola. Come through the big doors, come right over here, and uh, it was a treat because being raised in the country, you didn't have the like we've got it now. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the many memories that I've got of this store. This store was a big part of the life of this community, a community which has a long and storied history. While the last Civil War battle fought in Tennessee, was fought right here through this community and along the banks of Sugar Creek. There's a marker that commemorates that. But the real marker of the life of this community was the Big Red Store, 
a marker that Linda and her partners definitely want to stand tall once again. My husband and I would come in here when we were children, kids growing up, and it was just amazing to walk in and come in to buy your Coca-Cola, your moon pie, ice cream, just whatever, you know, your treats would be. And so many people, that this has touched their lives. The history is like the, the older people told their children, and they have told their children, and now they can come and see what their grandparents were talking about. The store reopened as a place for community gatherings and as a museum honoring the lives of the people who called Appleton home, there's a very good chance that the Big Red Store will be the topic of fond conversation for generations to come. Oh.